Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. My name is Victoria Sung, and I'm Assistant Curator uh, Visual Arts at the Walker Art Center. And joining me is Laura Prevost, the beautiful and one and only Laura Prevost. Um, before we get started, I do want to thank um, a few people uh, for their generous support um, of this exhibition and the accompanying performance, uh, which we will soon um, tell you more about. And uh, that is the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, the William and Nadine McGuire Commissioning Fund, and the David and Lenny Moore Family Foundation. Uh, and I also just want to thank a few key people who really helped uh, bring this exhibition together. Um, and that's Maud Gissels, uh, who is from uh, Lore Studio, um, Gwyneth Shanks, who is our postdoctoral uh, Mellon Interdisciplinary Fellow, and uh, Joel Schwartz, who is our lead technician for the show. We really could not have done it with all of your help. So thank you. So. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Laura everyone. Laura has a couple thank things too. Yeah, thank you, Vicky. Thank you, everyone, for your wonderful help. Thank you for the sun, the sky, the table, the bees, and the, the bees, <laughs> and mood, and everyone who's made this possible. And so I think maybe I'll give a quick introduction um, to Lore, uh, and then we'll get started and talk a little bit about um, her practice and this installation in particular. Uh, Laura Prevost is an artist who was born uh, in France and has lived and worked in um, London as well as Antwerp, um, and is now based in Antwerp. Um, and she is primarily a video artist, but many of her videos kind of spill out from the screen into these really beautiful installations that um, kind of tread this boundary between, you know, reality and illusion. So many of the objects that you'll see kind of seem to spill out from the screen itself into the space of the gallery, and then from the gallery here, kind of onto the terraces as well. So kind of intermingling art and everyday life. Um, so really this installation takes place in this gallery, but also what's going on out there. So, <laughs> Laura, yeah. maybe do we want to pull it to the side? <laughs> I'll, I'll, don't worry, I'll be there. <laughs> so, maybe we can start with um, talking about art and life. There's, you know, one thing, one phrase in particular that I really loved, and it has to do also with the video. Here you have kind of a fish a smelly fish, and I've heard you say that you love when people say, you know, your film stinks, or it's really smelly. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk more about that? Yeah, um, um, oh, my head, a bit my eyes are a bit scratchy, but, um, yeah, I, I, um, how do I talk about this? Yeah, I, I think it's something I, I always, um, in a lot of the, 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 the piece I've worked on, I, I try to um, sort of, sort of break that wall between art, what's considered as being an artist and, um, and, and how do you sort of a, translate an emotion to, 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 to bring smells to, to how your mind start trigger smell or you know how, how do we experience the, through art or even enhance an experience through art uh, that we've experienced in the past. I mean it's all about memory and um, and how, uh, yeah, yeah, your brain triggers a little thing that you might have experienced as a child or unconsciously. Um, so it's very much um, this idea of, yeah, I, I'd love that a medium can do more than what it is. I mean, that a medium is not just pixels on the screen or that uh, it becomes, um, it becomes, uh, it starts to stink or it starts to melt into the, into the audience and, and as a viewer, you become this kind of pro protagonist. You, you are the smell, or you are, uh, yeah. So it, it's finding ways to trigger this. <laughs> yeah, so you do that quite a lot through the, as you're saying, the bit. <laughs> I'm seeing one eye right now. <laughs> you um, do this quite a lot through the, <laughs> through the videos themselves, but triggering these, you know, memories, kind of the, you know, the Proust de la Madeleine, as mm. I think you've kind of referenced mm. before, mm. kind of these childhood memories, mm -hmm. once you smell something or see something. But then also, your videos are quite physical as well, mm. and, um, you know, many of the objects that are in the installation mm -hmm. are related to... Mm -hmm. what you see on screen, so you kind of mm -hmm. bridge that gap between yeah. what's here and what's there. Yeah, there's a, this, I really like a talk that, um, I like the way Peter Kubelka talks about films or about childhood, how um, 
we all know the taste of his table. I mean, you, as a child, we've licked everything. You know, you've, you've, you. It's not just visual. It's, it's a full experience. Even if it's an image of a table, you, you know, it's taste or you know, it's texture. And I, I don't know. So it, a lot of time, the films try to enhance this a bit or make you again conscious of your, the complexity of what you're seeing or what you're experiencing and. Um, so I think that's that's definitely a part. Something I mean, it, it, it's also about uh, so much about memory. Um, Peter Kubel talks a lot about how you you may have gone picking blackberries as a child, and your mom tells you, no, no, not this red one is not good. The, the black one is good, and and your memory just measure. We'll always remember the best raspberry. So it's all about measurement and how you we we taste thing and and how. The, the, we we memorize uh, something that is stronger than the other, or and it's constant. Uh, so I think with the images as well, it's this constant um, playing on what's uh, more dominant or what if it's as good as before. Or, and then when you talk more about um, the the melting of the characters in the space or bringing object into. <coughs> this um, environment is. Uh, I, I'm hoping to extend that pixels into physicality and uh, and making the all of you participants and the, you you're the protagonist you know without you the show is nothing and uh, without so it's really you are the actors you are the one who, who might link this branch with who's been growing boobs we don't we just found it down the park we were very surprised so we we put it up there. Very but feminine branch. Yeah, it's a weird thing happens these days in this world, you know, with so much uh, uh, hormones in the ground. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's really getting, ma making uh, one part, part of the of the situation. And, and can we talk about the objects themselves? Because they are kind of everyday objects that you find or, you know, ones that are personal maybe to you, but also mm -hmm. that may be familiar to everyone else as well, so mm. it becomes more of kind of a universal experience of mm. your videos. Yeah. Um, what you mean? But how do you, I guess kind of how do you choose, you know, I know it's quite organic for you, but how do you mm. kind of choose which objects to, you know, put in the video and then also highlight as mm -hmm. kind of relics of sorts in the mm. installation space? Yeah, I, this, this, I think uh, I've been using a lot this idea of relics uh, of the everyday, so this glass could become the most important glass ever because um, Vic drank from it or whatever. But uh, And having kind of reimagining it, its history, but also I find, I mean, the museum are becoming kind of new church for thinking and <laughs> I mean, it's very blunt and but it's, it has this uh, power of saying this is important or look at this and let's keep it. And so I think bringing this object and giving them a, a narrative of either fictional or, or real, uh, uh, bringing them a kind of consciousness uh, is something that... And the way I choose them, it's very, um, I think... Uh, I don't know, whatever's around, <laughs> I mean, close to uh, whatever we leave and, um, and here. I mean, here, when we, we came here, we had a very different idea. Huh? Of yeah, uh, maybe, maybe we should start talking about kind of what, you know, we see mm -hmm. and hear here. So yeah. in this gallery space, well, so the, the title of the exhibition and the accompanying performance, which we'll talk about more, is They Are Waiting For You. Yeah, we've been waiting for you <laughs> all day. We're so pleased you're here. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the initial conception was slightly different, but then when you came here and you saw the space, do you mm. want to maybe talk about kind of how your, you know, idea changed over time? Yeah, um, yeah, we ca I came to, we had a, a very, um, we've done a lot of drawings and sending each other's ideas, and, uh, and I knew uh, what I wanted to do with uh, the video piece, which is the centerpiece, I think, for me. Uh, but I, um, I was really playing of what would be this, the, the, the rest of the space. And we discussed a lot about creating a kind of waiting room. They're waiting for you. Please take a seat and uh, wait. You, you'll see what's going to happen in the next stage or in the next um, part. Um, 
And then when we came here, I think uh, what became stronger is the windows and this effect of uh, seeing the, the, the city and how uh, the outside should come inside and vice versa, the inside should come outside and um, make, as, I don't know, if those who've seen the video, uh, the, 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 the promise of the video is that uh, you belong to it all. I mean, you, uh, you are the view, you are this view, you are these walls, you are this floor, you are this chair, you are the structure we made, you are the bean, you are... Um, it's this kind of letting go of any knowledge, almost any words, and you become... And I think once we came here, it became more obvious that this room should become the outside, almost, so really break, stop having that barrier of the glass, almost, but questioning it and, and letting the door open and letting life come in from every side of it. Letting leaves blow in yeah. intentionally. <laughs> yes, of course, yeah. And so maybe we can also talk about, you know, there's a structure that we've constructed in the space, mm -hmm. which really kind of breaks up this gallery in a really interesting way because mm -hmm. it's a very rectilinear gallery. Mm -hmm. And when you saw it, you kind of wanted to play with the angles and mm -hmm. kind of have, you know, the, the visitor kind of walk through and get a little disoriented and lost. Mm -hmm. And what was the thinking maybe behind kind of this dark, you know, almost a womb-like space when mm -hmm. someone enters the door? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, again, we did a lot of drawings and thinking, um, and this felt the most sort of, it's clearly a um, human-made structure. <laughs> it's like clearly been uh, designed. Um, I think there was always this idea of, uh, you, there's this long corridor, I don't know if some of you have worked through yet, but in the long corridor, so you, you really, Go entering a kind of subconscious. Uh, here you're really down to earth with kind of reality. And so you're walking down this corridor where flashes like memories or objects sort of flash around. And, uh, and then you enter the waiting room. Then you ask to wait, take a seat, look what's around you. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of play around feminine and masculine. Like I'm being French, but living in the Croatian desert, I know a lot what the, this play on them, on uh, masculine and feminine. It's, it's been something because I, when I speak English, I always say, "Oh, this chair, she's not. She's very heavy." Or this table, she's a bit uh, grey. Or you know, because, uh, with Latin language, you you put you put a gender to object, and I think it became. I I I, I wanted to play on this idea of language and what we learn and why should it be feminine, why should it be masculine and so sort of playing on this. So, so that the waiting room is a lot around the, the gender of objects and and asking you to, to consider what you see, what you know, what's the name of things, what what's what how come you know this it means this and and then uh, then I, there's this um, the, the you'll see here the the video <laughs> pointing in the right, right direction. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a, that's where you you it's a video divided in four parts. First, you you learning how complex the world is that things don't really mean what they mean, and then you have to use that complexity into action, and then you de-learn and you just learn what the word is for things. So it's as a child like tree, tree water, water, and then slowly there's no words. So it's quite an epic thing if you manage to enter it, but it's from complex to total being. <laughs> but I mean, it's something I've tr I'm trying to do. I mean, it doesn't mean it, it's there. <laughs> and and uh, I wanted to have this crack where you can enter, but also see the, the city from. Right, again, blending the art, life, inside, outside, all of that. And just to point out um, what Laura was talking about earlier about kind of, you know, some of these nouns in French having either being masculine or feminine nouns, you'll kind of notice small, subtle details on many of the objects that are throughout the gallery space, you know, even on the chair, which is a feminine chair, um, may have some small boobs on it or some of the branches and some of the other objects you've kind of uh, personified in a way. 
Um, well, you've been great help on that. <laughs> We've been busy. Stu busy Studio Provo. Factory. <laughs> We've had a, a boob making <laughs> factory and all these little objects. <laughs> uh, but one thing that you know you were talking about um, in terms of the central video, you know, you talked about kind of the four different parts and how you're really trying to prompt this de-learning and this de-learning of kind of all the categories um, that we are asked to remember. And so in the beginning, you really start off and your voice kind of says, you know, remember, remember, and then it's kind of an impossible task to remember everything. Um, but then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious if you can talk a little bit more about how, you know, language plays a role in your work in terms of there's the, t the written text on generally on the screen, there's your voice, which uh, Laura narrates, you know, many of her, her video works, and so it's either her, you know, soft kind of whispering, or you can be quite bossy at times and, you know, demanding of, of the viewer, but as you were saying, you're kind of trying to make the viewer a protagonist or, you know, really central part of the experience. But how, how does language kind of figure into, you know, what you're doing and why, why this interest in language? Um. Yeah, let me think. <laughs> Scratch your head. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think language, language is so, I think it's, it's I mean, it's a um, center part for anyone's life, I guess, but I mean, we've, uh, for my practice, it's definitely been a, a very, very central, central, uh, mostly because I find, um, as, especially as a teenager, I couldn't use the right word. I really felt I was not, they wouldn't express the emotion I had or, you know, how... And then it, I think as an artist, it seems like you deal with your teenage anxiety forever <laughs> and, or whatever, I don't know, but it's... Um, it became... And also, I moved to London when I was 18 and uh, again, it was a new language and a new uh, meanings of things that you would articulate, um, you would de-learn or relearn and you would question even your own knowledge of words, either in French or whatever, so when I go back to France, everything becomes also quite magical, like they would say, in France it's quite common to say, take, uh, occupez-vous de vos oignons, take care of your own onions, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't have onions, but, you know, this sort of bringing distance to your, to your, to, to, to words, to the way we use them, and understanding uh, their complexity and, and I mean, when I, since then I've been using them a lot to, yeah, I mean, having, sometimes it's uh, to lose control of them and being lost in them, but also um, um, I love also the way they, they become incredible for the imagination. You, you know, with my signs, it's like ideally this wall would be five meters further. You have to, as a viewer, you you making the image of pushing the, the wall. So ideally, um, we all have a cocktail as we talk now, <laughs> or whatever, but how do we, uh, it's so nice to, to let an image, I love words for that as well, but they, they create so many images which you don't need to produce. Oh. Visually. Yeah, I mean, this, this interplay between text and image is really interesting, and also how, you know, you were just hinting at earlier that language, too, can sometimes uh, maybe put too many strict, you know, categories or mm -hmm. help us kind of define what we're seeing mm -hmm. in ways that maybe limit how we see. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, and it's once you learn that, I can see I've got very young children, and it's really like, this is a chair, now this is it, it's, it's only a chair, you know? <laughs> And when you're, you're just born, it's much more in some way, but you, I don't know, it has the weight, it has the texture, it has the smell, it has... And we kind of simplify it from what, with words, I think, just to a practical reason. Uh, but it's... I mean, it's the only way the word can run. <laughs> but I wouldn't, it's still a... Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting... I mean, it's, it's just nice to bring consciousness to the to it yeah and it's it's i think it's also interesting how you know language can clarify things but also in this process i also found that language in a way may not be sufficient enough to um make you know to translate a vision and yeah. so earlier you were saying you know how in the conception of the show you were kind of sending drawings mm -hmm. and we were kind of having these conversations back and forth mm -hmm. um, and i remember this really funny moment where you know we were talking about the floor plan mm -hmm. 
and we had been talking about it for about you know an hour mm -hmm. and at the end of the call we realized that we were both talking about the same floor plan but completely opposite orientations <laughs> so you know i thought laura was saying that the mm -hmm. windows were on one side she was talking <laughs> about the other side mm -hmm. and that's when we decided to really start doing facetime conversations because sometimes the visual is really what you need to kind of translate translate or communicate in in an effective way yeah and i think that's why i i'm I've been, I, I wanted to make art and paint, make myself look beautiful. Um, I mean, that's, I think mean, that's, um, there's definitely this, this idea that life is more complex than words. Um, and that's how, um, I think mean, art is magical <laughs> as well to bring these layers. And I think maybe before we talk a little bit about the stage performance, and I know you kind of wanted to open it up for um, questions, if anyone has questions for Lore, um, but uh, I wanted you to talk a little bit more about how, you know, the viewer is kind of a central part. Yeah. Uh, I let <laughs> your me open, open. <laughs> I'll open my eyes. There you go. How the, you know, the viewer really becomes a protagonist, and especially with this video, if, if you haven't seen it yet, um, you'll see that it really demands quite a lot of you. And so it asks you from the very beginning to remember things, and then it kind of, in a way, tests you as the video goes along. Can you, can you talk about, you know, I know you've mentioned kind of this bridging of art and life with the viewer as a central role, but can you talk about that more in terms of your broader practice? Um. Yeah, um, I mean, in this, especially in this piece, I mean, the, it's really, it's kind of a teacher telling you, don't forget and do this, do that. And then how action is, life is like, come on, you're not going to manage if you don't remember this and do this. And, and even for us, for the show tonight, it was like, oh, don't, oh we, need the, we need the Clementines. Yeah, in the video. We, uh, how do, don't, we f don't forget so that things hold together, you know? And, this, and so it's the, the video is asking a lot. Um, in general, it's quite, uh, the voice becomes quite bossy, but at the same time, it's very much about pixels, knowing they're just pixels, they're trying to be more than pixels. Like, no, have a cigarette. I have it, uh, told you it's okay. Have a cigarette. But it, they're just pixels, so they, they can make up anything they want. Or, um, so it's fine. It's this um, sort of uh, between the very controlling pixels and the idea of images controlling us and this overwhelming of information we get constantly through television, through selling us how to not lose our hair or how to so many things that are constantly thrown at us and, uh, and in the video in some ways it's, it's, it brings consciousness that you're only looking at images even though it's extremely demanding or bossy it, it, it tells you that you're looking at an image constantly as well it tells you that uh, I think so I hope, I mean it's, it's this play on, on materiality trying to be more than materiality or it's like it's the the object trying to be more than a table. It's the film trying to be more than a film. Uh, but and there's maybe kind of like no hierarchy between you know viewer or screen or yeah. pixels or every everything's kind of on an even even plane. Yeah. This inter this exchange. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't let you much time to speak, but <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it wants you. It's yeah. kind of the, the video constantly like, please stay with me a bit longer. <laughs> And um, uh, thanks for being here and, and uh, focus because we're going to be part five and we could go much deeper. And so yeah, the video um, is in demand of attention, but that's art. I mean, that's object and art who are in demand. Yeah. So I think maybe, Laura, maybe we can talk a little bit about you know, the upcoming performance. I know you're still working on that. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a, a, the exhibition and the performance um, are really a big part of our Mellon interdisciplinary initiative. Um, and that's an initiative that uh, is generally, generously supported by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. And it's one that's trying to bring together the different disciplines. So here it's visual arts and performing arts. So we have with Lore, um, an artist who has worked primarily, you know, in these kind of more moving image installations. Um, but in those moving image installations, really breaking that fourth wall 
um, kind of offering a different platform. So with uh, the performance that will be on, uh, I think it's February 9th and 10th in our McGuire Theater, that's one that, um, you know, it's really one of your first major uh, stage productions. And so I know it's, you know, really going to be closely tied to what we see here in the gallery, especially with the video piece that will kind of anchor the stage as well. Um, but what other, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Um, <clears throat> they're waiting for you. Just <laughs> come in February, they'll be waiting for you. Um, yeah, um, I think it's, uh, it's going to be very much this consciousness of, uh, it's going to, the, the starting point is the video t becoming uh, even more enacted by either people or light. I think that I use lights a lot as well, so um, curtains being aware that they're there and sort of seeing a, um, it's yeah, bringing consciousness to to the place we will be. I think that the theater, the theater is going to the theater is going to be singing uh, itself in some ways, or um, presenting um, or being itself in the most sort of complex. <laughs> I hope, but it's uh, and I will work with a wonderful artist, Sambil Infante, who I've worked with, and also um, m um, my uncle. Who's in, the gal who's in the film and who's a wonderful choreographer who's gonna uh, be moving things with me. Mm. And Philippe, who's here, who's gonna <laughs> bring it all it to life. <laughs> you can see him. <laughs> yes, I, you're there. <laughs> and you will, you know, there you'll even further be kind of, you know, making this hybrid between reality and illusion stage and audience. And I know you kind of want to keep it quite you know, active in mm -hmm. the entire space. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I think some other things that, you know, Laura's been working on, you did a residency here mm -hmm. in June and you've been working with um, some Minnesota-based si singers. Yeah. Um, so you'll have some choral singing and drums and mm -hmm. recorded sound and, as you said, mm -hmm. dancing and movement. And um, so it'll really be quite spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. look but you look pretty grumpy in your mask. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit hot, you know. <laughs> I'm sweating. sweating. <laughs> it's just like all these people here. This just makes me very nervous. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I I really look forward to to um, to welcome you, and uh, we will be waiting for you. We we will be working hard uh, for it. And um, yeah, thank you, Vicky, yeah. so much for your incredible work and all this uh, wonderful team here. Who, yeah, made a, I felt I was massaged for the whole <laughs> week, like into making this happen. So um, yeah, thank you, the Walker and everybody. It, it was so much fun. Yeah, Always. thank you. <laughs>